All right. Well, um, I will call the March 11th Airport Advisory Board meeting to order. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you all. Uh, Michelle, can you please call the roll? Yeah. Board members Steve Lip. Here. Malcolm Dean. I'm here. Harrison Earl. Yeah. Kent Jacobson. Here. Melinda Jordan. Here. Russell Robeson. Here. Orion Wiseman. Here. Councilmember Peck. You have a quorum. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, first item on the agenda is our public invited to be heard. So in just a moment, Michelle, I'll ask you to unmute anyone who wishes to speak. Um, same rules as previously. We'll have three minutes for anyone who wants to give a comment and ask them to state name and address to start the comments. Um, address comments to the board, please. Okay. Oh, Heather, who's not in meeting. So maybe he wants to make his comment later in the meeting? Yes. There we go. Yes. Okay. All right. There we go. I'm seeing no one wishing to comment at this time. Uh, we'll move next agenda topic of approval of minutes. Any comments from the board tweaks anything on the minutes from our February 11th, 2021 meeting? Having read and reviewed the minutes, I move that they be approved as written. I'll and second that. Thank you. So moved by the Vice Chair Jordan and seconded by Board Member Bliss. Any discussion from anyone on the board? All right, I had a quick I question. Yes, sir. David Slater, uh, he mentioned last month about the leasing of all the hangers. Does anybody own the hangers outright so that they're not paying a lease or are all the hangers being leased at Longmont Airport? Um, Matt, Board Member, can I ask you to hold that till a little bit later and just well, we'll fine. Minutes and come back to it if that's okay? Okay. Okay. On the minutes then, any other comments? All right, so I am going to call roll for um, each of our votes in accordance with the new participation policy we're going to discuss in a little bit, just so we're ahead of that. So, uh, Vice Chair Jordan? I approve. Or Is I'm that a yes or a, okay? Yes, or no, probably. <laughs> yes, yes I, I vote yes. Board Member Bliss? I approve. Uh, Board Member Dean? I approve. Board Member Jacobson? I approve. Board Member Robeson? Hi. Board Member Weissman. I'm going to abstain because I wasn't here at the last meeting. <laughs> Thank you. And the chair will also vote to approve. So that is six approve, one abstention. The motion carries and we approve the minutes. Um, next item on the agenda is old business financial update. Mr. Slater, would you like to kick us off? Sure. Um, revenue to date is 160556 cents. Uh, expended and or encumbered is uh, $57,394.43 uh, expended and encumbered $26,220. Uh, that $26,220 is for the upcoming uh, work that we're going to do on the detention pond, the water quality pond, to bring it in compliance with stormwater quality. Mm -hmm. um, and then so the Total difference between revenue and expended and encumbered is $76,942.06 to the good. Nice. Um, there was $4,495 under professional contract services uh, to Pet Ditch Company. That had to do with the runway safety area project that we did last year. And we are finalizing um, payments on those items and should be getting close to closing that out financially and completely. Um, currently, the snow removal services were at $14,217.50. Um, and obviously, this weekend that will probably go up fairly significantly due to the upcoming snowstorm. Um, Maybe can you hold just for a second? Uh, Board Mayor Bliss, you had a question there. Yeah, well, say that. First item that you, for 
for pro, uh, professional the, contract services. What was that? Uh, the engineering review. Um, oh, that's done by Pep Ditch Company. Okay, gotcha. Well, that answers the question. Thank you. Sure. Um, that sixty-eight eighty-seven was for a couple of months of cleaning at the public restroom. Uh, we have decided to do away. They, they keep raising their rates on uh, cleaning that. Um, and so we decided to do away with that contract for the airport. It's just one restroom, one room that needs cleaning and maintaining. And the amount that they were wanting to charge for maintaining that had increased significantly. So there's another department in the city that has a full-time cleaning person on staff and we are going to borrow there. Well, I say borrow, we're going to use that employee to clean each week. And um, it shouldn't take them very long. So we'll do an interdepartmental billing memo for that um, going forward, I suspect. Is that so, somebody that's moving around in the other buildings in the area and will hit us as they go by? Nice. That's good. Yes, that's good. correct. Yeah. Um, and the porta potty service, that's kind of, they, they had increased their rates as well, but um, not outrageously. So um, that's where we're at 344 on that um, through February. So, any other questions? Yeah, can we pause for any board questions on that part? Board Mayor Bliss. Yes, um, you talked about this Peck Ditch Company, the engineering review, and in 2020, there's a Peck Ditch Company, and it says RSA Plan Review. What, what is RSA? That's Runway Safety Area. Runway safety area. Okay. Could I make a request that anytime you put an acronym in there that you write it out? Because there's so many acronyms. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they are. I'll make that change. Thank you. Okay. Wouldn't be aviation without them, would it? <laughs> no, it wouldn't be. <laughs> um, Mr. Slater, do you think you can address Board Member Dean's previous question since we're on finance and talk about the, I guess, hangar rental business model maybe? Right, so the airport ground is owned and operated by the city of Longmont, so we just lease the property. And the individual hangars and, and structures of the lessees or airport owners, investors, and people like that, that, that have a hangar or whatever out here, those are from, from the foundation up belong to the private owner. So the buildings themselves are privately owned. And okay. the only exceptions to that is the electrical vault and the building that I'm in. Okay, that makes sense. The city sense. owns those two, two buildings. Okay, that makes sense. I'm just curious. Sure. Other questions from any board members at this point? Oh, I'm sorry, um, one more question. And this goes back to 2019. <clears throat> on the professional contract. What is this safety risk management analysis for 27,000? That was, was that? <laughs> that was during the time that uh, we were addressing concerns with safety regarding skydiving. And so we hired a professional consultant to do a safety risk analysis. And that was the feed. If you missed a, a heck of a public meeting on that one. I guess I did. <laughs> well, right below it, okay, I understand that now. Right below it, what's a stakeholder meeting facilitator? What is that? That was part of that process. That was part, it was? part of the same yeah. process, and okay. the city thought it would be best if they had, if they hired a, an independent third party facilitator to facilitate between. To stop the fights? Pretty much. <laughs> okay. That answers that. Thank you. Uh, Board Member Jacobson, did you have a question there? Yeah, just a question on snow removal with the upcoming weekend storm. How much do you anticipate that number going up because of it? And are you making any spe special preparations for it? So, yes, the I've, I've spoken with the contractor. They are going to have additional equipment 
on standby as needed. Um, meaning if they have to bring in a dump truck and load big piles of snow to move to the dump locations, um, they'll be able to do that. And uh, just, just planning on hitting it and keeping up with it as much as we can when it gets heavy. Um, my biggest concern with the upcoming storm is how much rain is gonna be off and on mixed and alternating between snow showers, rain showers, or a, or a mix of the two, um, which could possibly create icing conditions. And we don't use chemicals at this airport. So there is the potential for runway closures at certain periods of time, but we're just gonna wait and see how that goes and, and uh, what kind of uh, friction value that we have on the runway before making that decision. Um, as far as the price, I couldn't even guess. I would, I would certainly say it's going to double, but if you're going to have them out there making more passes, as the snow continues to fall, it's probably going to be more than double what their normal bill would be, um, which is anywhere from twenty-eight to thirty-two hundred dollars an event. Um, that's kind of the range, I guess, depending on how long it takes them to get get stuff done. Um, and with additional equipment, that will probably also spark a little bit more in, in the price. So I, I couldn't even, I wouldn't even want to begin to guess. And I, I just don't like to speculate and then have somebody say, well, you told us this amount. Well, it was the best guess. And I, I would say that it's going to be at least double what our normal bill is. So I'm, I'm guessing probably around six grand, maybe, yeah. maybe I'm, I'm thinking more than that, but don't hold me to that. We won't. And plus we keep hearing snow apocalypse and then we hear, Oh, it's going to go to the North. And it's yeah. a, I'm watching out the window to see the first flakes in case they happen. I saw last I saw it was midnight, but it looks like snow. It's gray and dropping and it's looking looking like snow so we'll take the moisture that's for sure david broadly while we're on snow topic really quick um just that dollar amount in the in 2021 so far is you know approaching full year 2020 and substantially higher than full year 2019 right <laughs> you wanted a response to that no i'm just kidding <laughs> um so in those years, um, there, there was a time a few years ago that there was a lot of people suggesting and requesting that we go and get a plow from the Denver auction um, to get things covered uh, because there was a previous contractor a while back that uh, seemed to be having a lot of breakdowns and I would have to go borrow a truck from next door at Public Works. And so during that time, I was doing a lot of snow plowing, which saved a lot of money, but the snow plowing I started doing was either because there was stuff missed or lots of breakdowns with snow plow equipment and wasn't getting done in a timely manner. So that's all in the past. We have a contractor and uh, they seem to be doing well so far. And after meeting with LOPA, um, which is the Longmont Owners and Pilots Association, um, I've had some, some comments back from them that they said that people seem to be happy with how things are going now. So we're just kind of looking forward and moving forward. Helpful context, thank you. Sure. Board member Bliss, did you have another question? Oh, well, sorry. it was on the same lines as uh, what you were talking about already, David, but um, could you just for me, because probably the other board members know this, but will you go over who does the snow plowing? Does the FAA do any of it? No, this is uh, the only items that the FAA takes care of on the airport for maintenance is the excuse me, the Bassies. 
they are owned and maintained by the FAA. Outside of that, uh, we, the city through the airport has a contract with Mountain West Landscapes. And um, there are other people, individuals out here that have snow plows that do their portion up right up against their hangar and uh, take care of those areas that are not city responsibility. But outside of that, our contractor is Mountain West Landscape. <clears throat> so the HOAs do not cover their hangers at all? No, they do. Oh, they do? Yeah, the HOAs have their own either contractor or someone that is a lessee who has plow equipment on that row or in that group of hangers um, do the plowing for, for those areas that's their responsibility. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions from the board? <laughs> I'll let you go into the last page of the financial update since we kind of got stuck in the middle here. All right. Um, not much to tell on that one uh, for this year. Um, there will be some uh, expenditures that eventually come out and reimbursements under the grant from last year, but that's only to close out the, the actual grant that carried the, the financial part that carried from last year into this year. So for now, there's, there's nothing there. Um, as soon as there is, I'll update that page. Comments, questions from the board on financial update, either specific on the capital and the grants or just broadly. I've got one then, um, I guess on the grant side specifically, Okay. Two questions on grants. One, the airport's coronavirus relief grants, pro relief and recovery grants program, um, basically CARES Act two. it looked yeah. like $23,000 come in the airport's way. That's correct. And that's a formula set up by the FAA and they determine how much each airport gets based off of their formula. Is there thoughts on how that's going to be used for in 2021? Uh, it's, it's even more restrictive than uh, the first grants. So there's not a whole lot we can use it on other than to cover operational cost at the airport. Some of the, the if, we, if we do extra cleanings, then helps covers it helps cover those costs to, to do the cleanings like the public restrooms and, and things like that. And uh, eligible for other operational costs, whether it's it's uh, salary or otherwise. Okay. But, so we to take full advantage of it. In other words, it just won't be right applied to a particular project. Correct. Okay, still good. The other, I guess, part of that question, and that's, I think, somewhat related to the um, measure that President Biden signed earlier today, but my understanding is the matching, the airport matches on AIP projects is basically covered for the rest of the year for 2020. Correct. So given that, I assume that means we, we save a decent amount on projects and you know, so one, hopefully we'll be able to use those on future projects and or accelerate projects. But two, CDOT also is saving some of that money. And my understanding is at least they're giving some of that back to airports in other grants. And I don't know, I, I honestly don't know the details there, but don't know what opportunity there is for us to seek out some of the CDOT dollars. Right. So through our CIP process, when we plan out, they require us to plan out ahead through the CIP process. Um, we are carrying over our 150,000 non-primary entitlement towards our next CIP project. So we don't have any projects planned for 2021. So, and what, what is covered by that is it cover the, the CARES Act would cover the state's 5% and it would cover the sponsor, which is the cities or the airport fund. It would cover that 5% if we had a project. But since we don't, we don't get to take advantage of that. Correct. 
So like last year on the runway safety area project, it was 100% FAA grant. Um, and we received, uh, I don't remember the numbers that I, I gave you guys. It was the total, the total amount of grants we received in 2020, if you count the $69,000 for the CARES Act, the runway safety area project at 100% and the 400,000 towards the um, south side utilities was a little over a million dollars that we received in grant funds last year. Okay. No way to accelerate a project to take advantage of no match in 2021. Mm, no, generally you have your biz, your, your engineer estimate and your engineering at least at 75%. And because we have to plan out based off of what funding they would have available for us. Generally, I mean, we're already in the, we're already in the year that that's available when it became available. I just hate so, it not taking advantage of anything we can, so. Yeah. Right. Board Member Jacobson, did you have a question? Uh, just in, as a follow-up to Russell's uh, question to you last week, David, what about uh, accelerating the paving um, that, that we brought up last month? Is, uh, that, so is, that, a, is that a possibility to, to figure into uh, grant money? So in our discussion um, that we had on that, the pavement that uh, board member Robeson was talking about was actually areas of tenant responsibility. So that, and, and some of the areas of payment, like the, the joint seal for the ramp and things like that, um, the FAA, I mean, if it, could we accelerate it earlier on? We could, but we would have to push off the other higher priorities that we have that are eligible for funds to a different year. So we could swap them around and accelerate them, but you're pushing the other priority projects further down the road. Unfortunately, the FAA in this region <laughs> um, kind of does things their own way. And uh, most ADOs are the same way in most aspects, but um, how they look at runway extensions and things like that is a little bit different in this region than it is in other regions. Hmm. Um, as far as those eligible items, they all pretty much operate the same way and there's no, the, the only opportunities that we have to apply for funding is like that $23,000 that they've basically allocated as far as just coming up and doing a project, it has to be planned out further in advance than that because there is a whole process to go through, generally starting at least a year and a half out um, with getting categorical exclusions for environmental, getting the engineering done, um, all the way up through going out to bid and submitting the, the application, which is, SF-424. So it's generally a, a year and a half process on most projects. If you've already got plans on the shelf that are updated, that would be helpful, but we don't have the budget just to hire an engineer to sit there and pump out plans and put them on the shelf and the event money might come up. Any other questions or comments from the board? Mr. Bliss. Uh, yes, David, another question for you. Uh, I was reading something in the capital improvement plan where there was some unforeseen circumstances with engineering. And I, I think you've addressed this before, but I forgot what you said that that was all about. Is that the sewer system that you're talking about? Yes, the, the sewer and the water. Um, they were provided all the information back in around October of 2019. Um, they didn't get started on it until the spring of 2020. 
and the person that did it retired uh, mid-year, uh, just just kind of middle of the summer. He retired and provided the the project plans and everything, and it was set up for an on-call contractor, which we needed to go out to bid. The on-call contractor is not set up for installation. They're set up for repairs. And so the more we looked at the plans, um, the more we realized it wasn't the layout that we had discussed on multiple occasions. And so the new engineer that took over um, started not completely over, but did a significant amount of work redoing the plans for that project, um, which has just recently been completed. But because we carried from 2020 into 2021, we now have to go back before council with mid-year appropriations and get that airport fund money match reappropriated towards the project. It, did we pay the first engineer? Uh, it was a city engineer. So any payment would be in arrears through the administrative management fee uh -huh. um, if, if they charge us at all. Okay. So, and we okay. did it that way because of the, the limited budget that we had to go towards this, and the projected cost of the project. Itself. But now we're not using the city engineer, correct? No, we are because they're the ones that designed it. Oh. That's what I'm saying. The new, the new engineer that took over for the city engineer that retired Okay. He's with, he's with the city as well. So okay. um, we've got a good good engineer on on the project now, and he's got that done and ready to go when we get the appropriations for 2021. Thank you. Sure. Last call for any questions on the update here. Then I'll move us on to airport needs recommendations to council. Does any board members have anything they'd like to raise? Mr. Robinson, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, David, I didn't see any uh, vote on our part on the lease rate for this year. Did we just go ahead and go with uh, keeping it the same or are we doing uh, that in another time? No, we're gonna pick it up another month. Um, okay. There's just still too much internal discussion left on that that, it wasn't ready to come back to you guys. It will come back again when we're ready to send it to council. Okay. Anyone? Prior, prior to us sending it to council, it will go through the board first. Anyone else have anyone, anything there? Well, I do, I have one. Last month, council member Peck mentioned in budget process, she's going to again ask for an operations employee for the airport in addition to David, so two employees. Um, given the budget impact of that, I think it would be appropriate for us to at least discuss whether we'd like to you know, present an opinion to council and that may be an agenda topic for a future meeting that is a, you know, more appropriate than just open discussion now, but if anyone has any thoughts off the bat, just wanted to throw it out there. So is that, Russell, go ahead. Russell, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess my, if you're asking for initial thoughts, I would say uh, David knows if he needs an employee and uh, he knows his budget. So I would probably take his recommendation on whether it's worth it to him or not. Mr. Slater. Um, I would definitely love some help. And I think that Hopefully by 2022, we should have enough for at least a part-time operations agent. I don't know. Um, I don't know if full-time is going to be doable, but I will know more in the in the next few months um, prior to submitting a request. Or generally, when you when you submit a request for an employee, it's around the same time as you submit your budget to the city um, for the following year, which is generally in the June timeframe. So I'm hoping in the next month or two to have a better idea of how to best capture the, the funds for another employee. And if it's doable for, 
full time or just part time? David, would it be appropriate maybe to add this as a May agenda topic then? Um, knowing that we don't have a June meeting likely and that way we can send a letter to council either supporting or, you know, expressing the board's opinion so that as sure. they consider it in the fall, they have our advice. Sure. Okay. Um, and in fact, if we can do it next month, I'll let you know, but for now I'll have it planned for May. That's great. Thank you. I know you, David, you and I were at one of those council meetings, I think two years back where it kind of came up and then immediately was taken off. So just want to make sure we have the opportunity to influence the conversation in sure. advance and, you know, provide, provide full context. So it's not just a kind of one off when it gets. Right. I agree. Any other um, questions or comments from the board on airport needs recommendations to council? Mr. Bliss. Uh, yeah, I was looking at some of the data on the operation of the airport. And I saw this 75,102 takeoffs and landings. H how do you get that figure? Do you go out there and count everybody? It, it's, well, sort of. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a uh, very complex method of what we call a guesstimate. <laughs> so, um, there are days that I'll go through and count operations at different different days, different times of the year, and then kind of see what the average looks like. I don't count every single day. I don't have time to do that. But I just wondered how you got 102, <laughs> 75,102. It, it, it's, it's a guesstimate uh, based off of other days and and if it looks you know if, if if i know one day i had 140 something operations then another day i had 98 operations or something like that then i just kind of look at it and see where in that range do we think that fits? And no. it's it's kind of it's kind of an average type deal, but okay. not exactly. Okay, well, I, I, I expected that's what it was, but and with uh, most of the that, airports, that's how it works. How does that compare to past years? Uh, it's certainly lower. Um, we had a lot of operations that were limited uh, during COVID, uh, or at least the initial phases of COVID. There was a lot of activities that were very limited. Um, we even had a point to where my high didn't operate for a while. Uh, some of the flight training didn't operate for a while. So hmm. uh, I would say that it's, it's probably eight to 10,000 lower. Wow, lower that's lower. big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just looked at uh, airnav.com, which gives an estimate of daily operations, and they had 88,000 for 2019. So that's about 15% less uh, based on David's count last year. Hmm. Thank you. I noticed the difference. And like I said, I'm right off the airport and I work from home, and I definitely um, know that Skydive was shut down. The instructors I know were not flying when we were really locked down, and then people just weren't. They weren't going up. They couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't do anything. So they, they just weren't doing much. Um, it was definitely, it was noticeable days mm -hmm. where there were absolutely no operations. Yeah. So it looks like it's getting back to more normal. So that normal will take. Good. Mm -hmm. Anyone else questions, comments, items for council? Hearing none, we'll move on to new business. First item there is adoption of the electronic participation policy during City of Longmont Boarding Commission meetings. David or Michelle, I don't know if either of you want to kind of open this up or, you know, describe what this is for us. Um, I don't want to put Michelle on the spot, although she would probably be better at doing it, but basically 
Uh, the board, the city has many or several boards and commissions and uh, as well as the city council meetings. And so they want to put in place a written policy that everyone is aware of that um, basically outlines how and why virtual meetings would be done or electronic or telephonic. And so this policy is just that and kind of encapsulates what the, the city um, expects and how they run, how they operate, why it's done that way to the greatest extent possible, I guess. Um, I don't know a whole lot more to say about that other than just going paragraph by paragraph, which I don't think is necessary. No, I, I don't think that's necessary. I, I, that was helpful just to get the context sure. of board members. And you know, um, I guess we'll maybe see if any board members have questions beyond that um, and then entertain a motion to adopt it. So I did read it, but I didn't catch um, raise, uh, doing an audible vote instead of uh, yay, nay. I don't recall seeing that in there. So is that... Yeah, it's, uh, you mean the roll call vote? Yeah, was it? Yeah, well, I was going to comment on that. Go ahead, uh, yeah. So I talked to our city clerk today, and as we don't have to do that as long as it's clear in the video who voted for, for what or how they voted, then you don't have to do it one by one like that. Okay. And just say, you know, all in favor, aye, anybody opposed, nay, and then name if anybody says, you know, a vote against or something like that. That's all you need to do. So um, if it sounds like we've got all eyes like on passing the minutes, mm -hmm. we wouldn't need to do it. But if we're voting as, probably specifically on um, issues, we'd want to go around and do it for that. You wouldn't or, even have to do that. You could just say all in favor, say aye. And then all opposed, say nay. Okay. And then just say, okay, you know, uh, board member Earl said, you know, he dissented or whatever, and then you'd, okay. be, you'd be fine. Just as long as it's specific of, of who who made the motion, who seconded the motion, and then who who voted which way. Okay. Given that information, then it kind of sounds like if you have more than one nay and you don't know who said it, mm -hmm. and it seems like the vote may be close, then you might want to do the roll call. You could do that, or you could just hold your hand up as well, and then make sure that everybody, because that's what I, I when they do council meetings, that's exactly what they do. Okay. I, you know, they raise their hands. I. Nay, raise your hand, nay. But it's totally up to you too. Just want to make it easier and you know quicker. Thank so. you. No, I, I appreciate that. I don't want to call the roll every time. So <laughs> we, we may go with hands. I like that suggestion, unless the board disagrees. Right. Uh, board member Weissman, did you have a question or comment there? Yeah, well, it sounds like you've already uh, uh, stated your preference. I was going to say that. Uh, whatever uh, adds clarity and whatever is easier for you to administer is probably the direction we should go. But uh, I like hands as well. So I'll speak in favor of that. But uh, I think what matters is that um, it's something that uh, facilitates the meeting and keeps us moving forward. So what, what you're most comfortable with. Agreed. Thank you. And, you know, if we end up where we're, it's close, then we may do a roll call and just make sure it's very clear. But approval of the minutes, I'm not going to worry terribly. Um, since generally those are pretty easy votes. Do we need to move to accept this? I don't, I don't consider it an option to adopt it. So I move that we uh, adopt the electronic participation policy during city of Longmont board and commission meetings as spelled out. I'll second the motion. Thank you. So moved by Vice Chair Jordan, seconded by Board Member Jacobson. Any further questions or discussion prior to voting? Mr. Bliss. Is this something we're going to do forever or is this just the, the guidelines for the electronic meetings? Uh, you know, I, I don't want to speak for city management, um, nor will I, but in my viewpoint, I suspect that if it ever becomes something that's not needed it, or needs to be changed, they'll either amend it and send it back out or do away with it. But I suspect, um, as far as technology has come these days, 
that they'll probably just leave it in place. Uh, even if we go back to meeting in person, um, should there be an event come up again later where, or if the board chooses to do virtual meetings uh, for some other emergency. Ms. Then, Ms. You want to chime in on my that? understanding from city attorney is that it's only during um, emergencies, a pandemic okay. or some kind Otherwise. of unforeseen emergency. Yeah. So it'll probably be in place forever. Um, just for when you do have an emergency. Once, I think once council meetings, council goes back to meetings in person, then all boards will go back to meetings in person. That's what it sounds like they're doing. So then this will just be a moot point at that point. Hopefully. Hopefully. I'd like to go back to person. Michelle, just since you mentioned it, is there any timeline for when council is thinking of that at the moment? We're hoping June. Okay. Um, but it could be August. It just depends on vaccines, really. Fair. But aiming for June is what we're aiming for right now. Well, that's helpful to understand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Board Member Robeson, did you have a question there? Thanks. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask basically the same thing. I was just looking at the health levels for Boulder County, and I don't know if we qualify as a seated event there in the council chambers, but it would appear that we could convene in person based on that. But I guess uh, it sounds like we're waiting for everyone to have the vaccine. Is that the threshold? Not necessarily uh, us, you know, board members having um, vaccines, but just getting more and more um, Be nice to have members of the public be able to participate safely too, I imagine. Exactly. I mean, you still may have to wear masks during that time if you haven't been vac vaccinated, but. Yeah, I mean, uh, just looking at it, if everybody's sitting six feet apart and wearing masks, uh, unless I'm reading it wrong, it would appear we could do it in person now, but maybe I'm missing something. Yeah. I think we could. The upside is we don't have to wear masks when we're meeting like this, which is. That is nice. Yeah, we do. I do appreciate that. Nobody understands me anyway, so <laughs> add a mask to it. <laughs> anyway, I'll we're, be a we're, spectator. We're so close to general availability of the vaccine. It seems kind yeah. of silly to rush if we're really just talking about a matter of month at this yeah, point. Yeah, I think we're getting close. <clears throat> we have a motion on the floor to adopt the uh, policy. Any further questions before we vote? Hearing none, um, we'll try our hand raising here. So all board members in favor of adopting the policy, raise your hands, please. Okay, anyone opposed? Board Member Dean, I could not see your hand in either one of those, I'm sorry. Can you either I or nay? Who was that for? Who was that for? Malcolm. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I had my hand raised. Yeah, that's it. I said I. I thank you. I just couldn't see your hand on the screen. So okay. I think that was everyone um, in favor of adopting. So thank you all. Next topic there then is the advisory board annual report to council. So you all have had this in the packet in advance. There, the idea here is a vote to approve and send it to council. Um, any discussion from the board prior to that? Mr. Robeson. Uh, I didn't hear anybody uh, immediately lodge any major complaints, so I'll skip right down to minor and uh, pedantic. On the, uh, just the formatting at the bottom of the goals, on the airport goals and accomplishment, some of the headers are all caps and some are regular capitalization. So just for uh, consistency, I guess, if we could change that to one or the other, that would please me. I will make those adjustments. Thank you. On a positive note, our pilots and paws made the newspaper, if you saw that, and um, got, uh, there were a lot of calls, um, TC line and open, open uh, editorial and received a lot of praise. I think I saw probably three, six, nine, at least uh, calls in or compliments um, 
to the pilots that are flying to rescue animals. And that was sort of a, I think, I don't know how the paper found out about it. I had talked to James and interviewed him for the, for the um, annual report. And then they caught wind of it and went out and got some photos and it, they've just really got it, it, um, netted some really good community engagement, really positive. And, um, of course, um, the medical flights that are flown with the phenom that Wade Tag flies, um, nobody's really ever asked about those. And I think everybody assumes those are business flights, but he does do quite a bit with that. And he'd had some really nice write-ups in national publications as well. So some nice visibility for our airport and to kind of remind people in the area um, that see the the jets and maybe want to complain about it or the helicopters when we're doing training. I really look at this report. I hope that it's where the public can get to it to see that and kind of understand some of the justification behind the use of the airport and how it contributes back to the community. I know we produce it, it goes to council, it'll be a part of the record there. And uh, I just am really pleased with the, the coverage that we got on some really positive stuff on what was otherwise a pretty quiet year um, for the airport. Likewise, Melinda, I think that was, it's great. And it's great to highlight it here as well. That's yeah. Really, really positive. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Then I would entertain a motion to um, approve the report and send to council. With the I'm, caveat that I'm changing the header. Oh, yes, motion to approve as amended. There you go. I make a motion that we approve the 2020 annual report for the airport uh, with the amendment. Um, I actually, I'm going to withdraw that. Um, one more thing in the 2020 airport data, the total flight operations is 66,318, but in the sidebar, it's 75,102. Yeah, I need to make that change. Sorry. Okay. So I move that with that change in the, um, the, header um, font changes that we approve the 2020 airport annual report as written and for presentation to council. Second. So move and seconded. Any last discussion on the motion? Sorry, who seconded that? that was Thank you. All right, hearing no further discussion, Let's vote. So all those in favor of adopting the report as amended, raise your hand, please. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Raise your hand. And Michelle, just for the record, it looks like a board member Bliss dropped off here. So we are six in favor and board member Bliss not present. Thank you. All right. So then we will move right along to our final public invited to be heard. Um, Michelle, if you can unmute, if um, there is someone who wishes to provide comment, same rules, three minutes for comment, please state name and address at the beginning and address your comments to the board. This is Don Dulcey and 335 Pratt Street, Longmont. Hopefully you can hear me. I, my my uh, question uh, concerns uh, the noise complaint log. And uh, I think that's a, a very nice summary that's been presented in uh, the body of the presentation that's going to council. My, I've delved deeply into noise for a number of years and looked at uh, the nature of, of uh, the noise complaints. And so I'm wondering if I could get some additional information. Uh, it would be in the form of detailing how many, how many times individuals complained about the various uh, things they could complain about, which would be a general aviation, skydiving, uh, helicopter, and et cetera those categories that they do have a, a tick mark in. As an example, uh, we have one complainer that complained 31 times. So individual number one complained 31 times. What 
Sorry, so all somehow it froze. So it, it did. Just got back. What happened? Not we sure, a, but we're all back here. Okay. So the question was on the number of complaints. Um, John's still here? I think yeah, so. Mr. Still here. You're still there. You were about the last, the last I heard, heard was the word what? <laughs> what? Uh oh. Sir, I'm we did sure go ahead and unmute you back again. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. I'm on. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure where the word what was in the <laughs> list. Of... <laughs> you were going to ask, you had one complainer, uh, one person with 31 complaints, and you were going to ask a question about that, the nature of the complaints, okay. I think. Okay. Uh, here was the, cons the, the information I needed, if I could get it. So we had one person that complained 31 times. I'm interested in what did that one person actually complain about? Did that person complain about the whole spectrum of things that are, are tallied in the report already? Or did that one person complain only about skydiving? And as you work your way back up through the list, person number two complained four times. But what did they complain about? And so in the end, there would be 34 different individuals and they all complained about something or a variety of things and that that information would allow an expected and observed statistical analysis to be made to see if there are any statistical outliers in the data that tend to bias these reports so that's the kind of information uh, i would like to uh, to have if possible Thank you, Mr. Olsey, for the comment. Um, Mr. Slater, perhaps in the final staff comments here, you might be able to address that um, a little bit. So with that then, hearing nobody else wishing to make public comment, we will move on to board council representative and or staff comments. And I'll start with the board. Any board members wish to make additional comments? Okay, Mr. Slater, would you like to make any comments? David, you're muted, unfortunately. Thank you, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, with regards to the questions that was posed and in, in, uh, public invited to be heard, there is an analysis by complaint type it just doesn't break it out by each individual complainer, um, which I, I, I guess that could be a curiosity question for some people. Um, I think this is more of a presentation to council over the, uh, just going into the overall generalities of the noise complaint system um, and, and how that helps me as, as the manager. Um, this is just information that they, they wanted to see. Um, you could put the extra work into coming up with many different various tables and graphs and charts from any amount of information that comes from that system. Um, I'll be happy to uh, provide um, Mr. Dulcie with the the, the data that we have on, from that system. Um, and typically he, uh, each year, he generally makes a public records request for that data. Um, just haven't seen one this year, but I will get with, with him and see about getting him that data so that he can go through it as he, as he likes. But as far as the, the format of this information, this, this is the format and the information that council looks at. And we do break it down. Uh, uh, we do have an analysis by complaint type. Um, specifically, the one person that complained 31 times is, um, was about skydiving. And generally, when you have one person complain that often, it's, that's historically been the case.
but there's there's a lot that goes into breaking all this data down and figuring out how many complained about what category, um, as well as the, the last table on the last page that you see there, how many people complained how many times, um, which is the kind of information that we're wanting to clarify. Um, outside of that, uh, the way it helps me is I look at the areas that seem to be the most affected or, or hardest hit, if you will, and try to put that information out to the pilots to ask for being good neighbors and being courteous as much as possible. Um, the one thing I will note uh, for this report is if you look at general aviation, uh, it comes a lot closer percentage wise to skydiving than it has in the past um, because people have been at home more working from home because of COVID mm -hmm. and believe it or not, uh, a lot of the complaints are about touch and go operations and generally it's from somebody that was next to the airport. Um, phone calls that I've received that, People are asking about touch and goes that aren't necessary. They may be, they may have filed a complaint here or may not have. Um, I've actually had people under the downwind leg for two nine complain. I've had people off the approach end of, uh, or sorry, the departure end of one one approach end of two nine complain. Um, and then again, some to the south and the other hotspot areas that we've typically had, but now we're getting more under the downwind. And, you know, there's not a whole lot that can be done about that. Actually, nothing really can be done about that because it's under the pattern. That's the established traffic pattern. And, you know, that's what I tell them. And uh, so a lot of what you see under general aviation has been uh, people complaining about touch and go operations and generally they're living right next door to the airport. I did see a flurry of chatter on Nextdoor um, from Southmore Park, the area closer to Pike Road, uh, during the lockdown and um, claiming 500 feet overhead and uh, pilots coming in from other airports to use ours. And there was quite a bit of chatter um, that I kind of just watched. And then Trevor Bear was also watching it and he helps us with our social media as well. Um, so the skydive complaints kind of speak for themselves, the single helicopter, three, three on the jet. Some people uh, get frightened when it comes in solo on final there. Um, but the GA complaints is, is the one that we really can do something about if there's something to be done. But I think, it, I think we're going to see it was really people being at home and actually not directly under the pattern. And that was part of the complaint. But when I lived off Pike Road, I was in the, in the path um, I was right in the path with that Mitsubishi and it would go over all the time. So it's uh, that into town does get traffic coming in. And I know, I think that generated some complaints from down there, but it's good to see them down overall, uh, you know, just to see that number be so much smaller and um, you get the odd complaints. And so I think it's really, if we know more about the GA complaints, um, if there's not, or if there's anything spectacular out of the skydive other than uh, just them going up and getting altitude, then that would be interesting information. But otherwise, it's really good to see them be down, especially in a year where everybody was home. Agreed, Melinda and David, that was a really helpful contact. Thank you. Any, David, did you have any other topics you wanted to raise in the comment tech section here? Uh, I don't think so. All right. Well, since we don't have a council member tonight, last call for any board members. All right, then we will adjourn the March 11th, 2021 Airport Advisory Board meeting. Thank you everyone for participating tonight and uh, we'll see you next month. All right. Good night. Take care. Good night. Good night. Sorry I left. <laughs>